and the Republican legislature wants us to think that they're not going to raise taxes, people lose their homes because they can't pay property taxes anymore. Democratic Visions is handmade by volunteers for the entire metro region by DFL Senate District 42. I'm delighted to have our friend Nancy Nelson back with us again. Minnesota is blessed with three outstanding progressive radio talk show hosts. Ed Schultz, seen on MSNBC TV and heard on Nancy Station AM 950, Matt McNeil, and yourself, Minnesota's drive time provocateurs. Nancy, without a doubt, you're the most ardent of them all. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Although the gentleman I, I keep company with may want to disagree with you on that. Nevertheless, I'm in good company. I'm happy to be here again. Nancy, let's have a genetic test on the Republicans. What are they up to? What have they been doing to the state of Minnesota since Governor Pawlenty's reign of terror? You know, I love the phrase you just used because I use it on the radio every day. What are they doing to us. And I don't think there's any question but what it has been a devastating session. And you know, frankly, Tim, we've talked about this on the radio a lot. Uh, I, I need to believe that people care about people. I need to believe that the average Minnesotan, if they voted Republican or Democrat, does not want to see a mother standing in front of HCMC with a child with the croup unable to get hospital well, don't care. Don't you think the man and woman on the street agree with you innately? Well, and, and that's why when I say I need to believe that people were frustrated. We, we dug into a hole that has never been so deep as we had with George W. Bush. We have our president come on board, Barack Obama. He has less than two years and everybody is saying, he didn't fix it, he didn't fix it, he promised he would, he didn't. Well, Right. Not only was it impossible to get out as fast as everybody wanted, but he was completely hamstrung. Bills didn't get out of committee. They were filibustered. They just went away. The Republicans have always said nationally, and they, the extension comes here to Minnesota, that what they want to do is see to it that Barack Obama is a one-term president. And we have seen that sort of um, arrogance hatred, lack of willingness to cooperate, compromise on any level, and most important here in Minnesota, we have seen a legislature that took its seats in January decide that they were going to protect 47,000 tax-paying Minnesotans. Those, that's those, the 47,000. The top 2%. 47, the that's top the, 2%. The top 2%, that's 47,000 taxpayers. That's who they're fighting to protect. Out of and there are 2 million, five and a half four, million Minnesotans? There are 2,400,000 taxpayers on this side. And the Republicans have said those 2,400,000, you're not important. You, 47,000, are important. It is beyond comprehension that such a thing would even exist. And of course, as we're videotaping this, we don't know if the state is going to shut down or not. If it does, 35,000 people are on the street because they happen to work for the state of Minnesota. Talk about victimizing people. People like you and me aren't gonna lose our jobs. We don't work for the state. But these folks who do nothing but help us every day in our daily lives and the functioning of our state are gonna be put out on the street. But Nancy, this is gonna have ramification. As much as serious as it is to the people who are gonna be deprived of a paycheck, they're gonna be uh, problems created uh, throughout the state, parks, the court system, nursing homes, schools. I mean, the average Minnesotan is gonna get hammered by this uh, shutdown that's gonna be imposed by the Republicans. You're absolutely right. Just happened to have my list in front of me. And not only some of those things, but the expense of this. Because 90% of our state employees are union workers, there are specific union rules that the state has agreed to should there be a layoff which is of course what will occur if the state shuts down. Every state employee, 35,000, must according to this agreement be paid their full vacation pay. Every state employee, 35,000, according to the agreement, must be paid 40% of their sick leave. By the way, they lose 60% of their sick leave. It's gone. Just to shut down, send out all of the notices, retool 
through the court system what is essential and what isn't essential and to pay all of these fees that the 35,000 have coming because of their contracts will cost the state somewhere between 200 and 300 million dollars. Unbelievable. 200 and 300 million dollars. And as you pointed out, unemployment. The unemployment uh, offices will probably close, so the state employees who have been laid off won't be able to collect their unemployment, nor will anybody else who's been collecting unemployment. The parks close, camping. We have 4,600 campers planning to camp on the 4th of July. Last year, Minnesota took in, in revenue, in the first week of July, because it's the 4th, $1 million will lose a million dollars in revenue if the Republicans shut us down. You think you like to take a drive and take the kids uh, someplace and, oh, we got to go potty and we'll stop at the road. No, you won't. No, th th those are all closed teachers and summer school, um, immunization programs for kids when they're going to go back to school, fixing the roads, that stops. You got a pothole, you have heat and uh, 94 buckles, too bad. They've all gone home. You have contracts with contractors who are working on the job right now. When the state shuts down, those contractors won't get paid their checks and all of their workers are laid off. I mean, it, it goes on and on and on and on. And for the Republicans to be willing to do this, and they'll say, oh, no, no, it's Dayton because, after all, we agreed to $110 million in extra funding for K through 12 that in the a, governor in a, wanted. In a transfer of funds. They didn't agree to exactly. any extra money. Exactly. $110 million. And, and uh, they said, and that's the biggest compromise we could possibly imagine. Weeks before, Dayton said, all right, I'm going to give up half of what I want, and that's a lot of programs that take care of a lot of people. I don't want to do this, but I'll come down $1.8 billion. Now, Republicans meet me. The next morning in their press conference, they said, Governor Dayton will be very happy to negotiate with you, but we will not discuss the raising of taxes one penny on the upper 2%. And they keep saying we're not going to raise taxes. Who do they think they're kidding? As soon as they don't send the proper funds back to every locality, property taxes for every one of us goes up. We'll continue to go through the roof. Exactly. And, and, and as you know, in the eight years under Pawlenty, property taxes raised more in eight years than they had in the total of the 60 years before Pawlenty. And the Republican legislature wants us to think that they're not going to raise taxes. People lose their homes because they can't pay property taxes anymore. But the first thing they did in January, their first act, about two days after they took the oath of office, they gave a $200 million tax cut to the biggest corporations in Minnesota who don't need it. Nancy, that was a devastating critique. Mm. What can you and I do, and what can people that view this program do to influence the Republicans to change their ways. Never underestimate the power of the written word and the telephone call. No matter if you have a Democratic or a Republican representative or senator, call them, email them, call them again, email them, and say, I don't like what you're doing. Don't do this. Do not do this if you do I'm not voting for you, and I'm putting together a whole movement that won't. At the end of the day, they want to go back. And I'm going to tell my friends and neighbors. Is that exactly, what you're saying? Exactly, exactly. And the other thing, Governor Dayton <clears throat> needs to hear from us. I'm told every time we talk to the governor's office how much it means and how they literally count the people who approve of what he's doing as opposed to those who disapprove. Unlike the Republican legislature, the governor actually wants to listen to the people of Minnesota. Tim and Nancy have more to say on the weird Republican bills that Governor Dayton had to veto. Online at dflsd42.org, at dflsd42.org. Democratic Visions is handmade by volunteers for DFL Senate District 42, Lori Pryor, Chair. Democratic Visions can also be seen on YouTube and at dflsd42.org.